In this video, I'm going to show you how to make 2026 the best year in your business. And we're going to do that by strategically planning your year inside Notion. The setup I'm about to show you has been used by over 600 business owners and is part of my overall business operating system, Agency HQ. With this planning dashboard, you are able to easily set and track profit targets, key performance indicators, quarterly objectives, and project initiatives, all from one place. And you can get this exact setup for yourself by using the link down below in the description. So grab your own copy and a cup of coffee and let's plan your best year in business together. Now, before we jump into Notion, let me just take a quick second to explain the methodology behind this system. You see, traditional annual planning fails for three reasons. It's too long to be predictable, too short to be truly meaningful, and too hopeful because we're often planning in December when we're overly optimistic about what we actually can accomplish. So instead, I use a methodology adapted from Ryan Dice for small service-based teams, and here's how it works. Instead of annual planning, you set a three-year revenue and profit target, and then you break that three-year target into 12 quarterly chunks that are adjusted for seasonality. Once we have these three-year targets in place, Every 90 days is where the real work happens. We set quarterly sprints of the actual work we want to get done. And we use the 333 framework to do this. We choose three key metrics or KPIs to move towards in the quarter. We then create three objectives that align to those metrics and then execute three projects under each objective. That gives us a total of around nine projects all rowing in the same direction towards our three-year vision. The beauty of this system, you're not waiting 12 months to see if your plan worked. You course correct every single quarter. So with that out of the way, let me show you exactly how this lives inside Notion using a real example. All right, to walk you through this, let me introduce you to our fictitious example, Marketing Lab. They're a three-person marketing agency currently doing around 200K in annual revenue. Let me show you how they would use this planning dashboard. So inside your dashboard, you'll have a planners page with two main views. We have one for the three-year plans and for the quarterly plans. So to start, I'll click new page and I'll call this three-year plan the dates it sits within, which would be 2026 to 2029. And as you can see, we also have a database template which gives us an exact structure to follow. The first thing I need to do is a bit of housekeeping. So just for this entry here, I need to make sure that I've also got the start date and end date. So that's again, 2026 to 2029. And now we are ready to begin filling out this three year plan. So as we know, if we come to edit, the current sales or the current revenue of Marketing Lab is 200,000 and the current annual profit is actually 40,000. And as you can see, we have a formula here that works out automatically the current profit margin, which is at 20%. Now here's where it gets interesting. Marketing Lab now needs to decide what they want their revenue and profit to be in the next three years. Now they're going to go with an aggressive growth approach which is top line to bottom line. What this means is that they're going to make their current sales their target profit in three years time. So we'll input the target profit to be 200,000. And for target sales, we're going to put in 600,000, which would be three times their current revenue, which then makes their target margin 33%. This is ambitious, but achievable in the three year time span. And now that we have inputted these targets, what you'll see is that this Notion dashboard is able to automatically break this down into 12 quarterly chunks. You can see on the left-hand side, we have the straight line projection, and this shows what they would need to hit each quarter if growth was perfectly linear. So in Q1, they would need to have 55K in sales and 18 around 18 in profit and then all the way down to Q12 they would need to be making around 156k or 157k and 51 or 52k um, in profit. Now obviously growth is never a straight line but this gives us a baseline but Marketing Lab knows their business patterns so let's say typically they see a surge in Q1 as companies release new year budgets 
then a slower Q2, then a steady growth in Q3 and Q4. Well, I can adjust the projected column in the middle to reflect this. So maybe in Q1, they may project that they'll make 60K instead of 55, and that their profit margin is more likely to be around 30%, which would make their profit for the quarter 18,000. And then Q2 might drop to around 52K with the same profit margin of 30%, which would mean they would be making around 15,500. These adjusted projections become their realistic quarterly targets. And then as Marketing Lab completes each quarter, they'll come back to this template and input their actual numbers. Let's say Q1, they actually hit 58,000 in sales and 12,000 in profit, meaning they were slightly under from their projected and straight line in all three areas. And now we have inputted each of these numbers, you'll also see that we have these graphs here to visualize this data. So on the left, we have sales targets and we can toggle between the straight line, the projected and the actual. And then the same for the profit targets, we can, we can toggle between projected and actual. So at a glance, Marketing Lab can see if they're on track or if they need to course correct. This three-year plan becomes their North Star, which is both actionable and quantifiable. So now we have our three-year plan in place. Let's zoom in to Q1 of 2026 and see how Marketing Lab actually executes on this plan. So I'll toggle over to the quarterly plan view and create a new page. Let's rename this to 2026 Q1. And then we can open this up as a page and actually give this a date range. So January 2026, end date, and we'll do this until March. And now by doing that, you'll see this actually groups it within the 2026 grouping. So then we can have all of our quarterly plans groups by the year. And just like the three-year plan, we have a dedicated database template that we can now work from. So the first thing we're going to do is set some overall number targets for this quarter. For the revenue goals, what we can do is come back to our three-year plan. Now we'll look at the projected first. So for Q1, we thought it would be around 60K and we'll put that as good. Now for the better and best, we can move up from this original good target in whatever feels instinctively right for us. So for Marketing Lab, this just might be 5,000 pounds in difference. So let's say a better would be 65,000 and a best would be 70,000. The second column is unit goals. So this is for our actual services we're providing or packages. And so we can actually try to estimate how many packages we want to sell. So for example, if we did website design, it might be that within this quarter, we wanna make sure that we have 10 people being sold on that package. And then in the final column, we can break this revenue down by month. So obviously we would want this to equal our good target, which is 60K, but it might be that we slowly build up to that as we're earning more and more money month on month. The second thing we need to do is set an overall theme for this quarter. Now at the moment, Marketing Lab is experiencing a couple of problems. Their team is overwhelmed, everything is currently very custom, and the founder is stuck in client delivery. So their big focus for this quarter is to systemize their business so they can start hiring a team and scaling without burning out. So their Q1 theme is going to be systemize for scale. In very simple terms, this gives everyone a great idea of what the focus is for this quarter. So now we can move on to the final part of this template, and this is where we start to implement that 333 framework. First, Marketing Lab needs to choose the three key metrics that they're going to follow for Q1. Now, I'll just walk through one path to save some time, but of course, we would repeat this same process three times in a row. So looking at their theme, what metrics or what metric would help them systemize and scale? Well, I think a good one would be team utilization rate. Better utilization would mean they're not wasting billable hours and can actually serve more clients with the same team or the same workforce. So hopefully you can see how this metric directly supports their theme of systemization. So in the KPI section, I can either add this as a new KPI if we've never tracked this before, but I know that Marketing Lab have already been tracking it. So I'm gonna to toggle over to all KPIs and we can see we have team utilization right here in the delivery category. But if I come to this category and mark it as one of our key KPIs, 
it's going to group it within here but it's also going to put it within this view so everyone knows that's the focus for this quarter the current monthly target is 65 percent but we actually want to increase this to 75% as hopefully all the work we're about to do is going to make this easier and more achievable. Now each week when the team comes into the KPIs dashboard and decide to actually log their KPIs for the week, we'll get the actual for each uh, week on week and then that'll actually give us a score overall for the month and we can start to track and see if we are really getting to this target. So we've got our KPI in place. Now we need to create one objective, the strategic pillar. So for Marketing Lab, the objective that is going to fit within team utilization rate is to systemize their client delivery. Now again, if they've already had this as an objective in the past, but they didn't quite get it done, we can come over to open objectives and then assign this to this particular planner but we're going to start this from scratch as they've never had this as an objective before. So we're going to choose new goal and it's going to be systemized client delivery. We can open this up as a page to itself. We can assign who the owner is going to be. Let's say it's just me and it will automatically be related to this planner. So now when we come back to the planner, we can see it sitting inside here as well. So we've got our KPI, we've got our objective below the KPI. The final thing to do is to set the project initiatives and we're gonna aim for around three projects. So to create this, I'm going to open the objective again and toggle over to this project initiatives view. And here I can add the specific projects we're going to action this quarter for this objective. So for example, the first project might be something like setting up the client team space inside of Notion so everyone can work from it. The second project initiative might be creating all of the SOPs, templates and checklists that are gonna help us start to assign work to others. So we can have that as an objective as well. And then finally, we may also want to get serious about implementing a team operating system or a set of ways of working where we have things in place that everyone knows what they need to do and how to do it. So we'll add that as an objective as well for the team operating system. Of course, within each project initiative, we have the opportunity to add the overall deadline. So let's say we wanna finish this by the end of January, we can have an overall owner, let's say it's myself again. And then most importantly, we have the opportunity to add any tasks. So we can have task one, task two, and task three. As we break this project down into the actual actual steps we're going to take, who's going to do it and when they're going to do it. So now when I click back out into the planner itself, you can now see we have our number goals, our theme, our KPIs, our objectives, and at the bottom now, our project initiatives grouped by our objectives. Once I do this for the other two arms, that would be a total of around nine projects for the quarter, all aligned to the same overall theme of systemizing for scale. Every Monday in their leadership meeting, Marketing Lab reviews the progress of these nine projects. And every team member knows how their work contributes to the bigger picture. And in 90 days, they'll do it all over again for Q2 with new metrics, new objectives, and new projects. But always working towards that three-year target of 600K in revenue and 200K in profit. And just like for the KPIs, the rest of the team can see these actual objectives and project initiatives from within your goals dashboard. They can see the overall progress. They can see who's working on what. And then of course, the actual tasks within the project initiatives can be seen on your tasks dashboard as well. Here's what makes this so powerful for small service businesses like Marketing Lab. First of all, it's focused. They're not trying to do 50 things. They're doing nine things really well, all pointed towards the same specific metrics. Secondly, it's realistic. They adjusted their quarterly targets to match their business seasonality. They're not setting themselves up for failure with unrealistic straight line projections. And finally, it's agile. Every 90 days, they reassess. Maybe in Q2, they realize they need to focus on sales instead of delivery. They can pivot without abandoning the three-year vision. This is how you turn a three-year vision into daily execution. All right, so that is how to make next year your best year in business. Again, the link to grab your own copy of this planning dashboard is down below in the description. Now, here's the thing. This system only works if you actually use it. 
Having a beautiful Notion dashboard means nothing if you don't review it weekly, update your progress, and hold your team accountable to these quarterly initiatives. So in this video here, I'm going to break down our complete framework for systemizing your business and creating a culture of accountability. I'll see you there.